Oh, blimey, it's time for another Banggood electronic kit, just for a change. And uh, this is um, this is one of many that I've bought recently. I, I bought a whole load of um, kits, and there's another one there, and there's even a couple of things they've sent me. I haven't even got a clue what they are. I mean, what on earth's that about? Anyway, so there we go. Um, we have um, bits and pieces, but... This one has many LEDs in it, and I can't even remember what this was. And there's no instructions, and I'm thinking, yeah, who needs instructions? Let's just go for it. Um, and like I say, there's many LEDs. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, the, oh, God, there is the dreaded beeper. Oh, I hate those things. Disgusting. Push to make switches. We've got uh, some little caps. Uh, a, a resistor or two, a few resistors there, a whole bunch of resistors here, quite a few actually. Let's sort those out. Transistors, try and put them in some semblance of order. Quite a few chips. A lot of soldering going to be needed on this one actually, quite a bit of soldering indeed. Uh, electrolytic caps, another chip of some description and uh, oh, an on off button. On off button and we have got a power source, I presume we've got a jack in here somewhere. Uh, another button there. Oh, is that the same one? Got, okay. well, got quite a few, but I don't even know what this damn thing does. Now that's for the power socket. And more transistors than you can shake a stick at. So uh, there's the uh, the board. So it's quite busy, as I say. It's it, quite a lot of um, uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, soldering is going to be needed on this chap. But I'm guessing we can get away with um, not worrying about instructions because you can see the screen, the silk screen has um, uh, got all the uh, components marked on there, resistance and so on. So um, I'm going to need to get my uh, um, my multimeter out to check the resistance of uh, the resistors strangely enough because I cannot read color coding. Well I can if I've got the code in front of me but I can't, I can't just sort of read it straight off uh, just by looking at them because I can never remember what the values are. So uh, I'm going to go and grab my multimeter. Oh, and I've got a big bag of um, of LEDs. I've got, a, it says on here, start, pause, stop. I think it's a Wheel of Fortune type thing. I think that's what this is. Um, I dread to think what the speaker does. It probably goes beep, 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 beep. Beep. That is my guess. I don't know that. I haven't seen one in operation. I haven't looked it up. I just bought it straight off of Banggood because it looked ridiculous and uh, I like ridiculous things. So um, there we go. That's the, the kit there. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to do is uh, check out which resistor does what. So uh, ooh. I keep leaving, leaving this thing switched on, but uh, fortunately it does... Uh, it does power down automatically, so that's good. So let's um, let's first of all check these resistors, see what the uh, the value of these is. There's a whole bunch of them here, and that's uh, 9.8k. So I'd imagine that's going to be 10k. Uh, so let's see if we've got 10k on this board anywhere. Uh, oh yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of 10k. So that's good because. Uh, We've been supplied with many 10Ks, so let's get all of the 10Ks slotted in. I always do the resistors first. It seems to be the way of things. Um, get the uh, get the resistors done first. I guess they're small, unobtrusive, and uh, if you don't put them in first, then uh, other components can get in the way. Um, yeah, I've got some other kits here. Um, I've got a quite a nice looking radio, uh, just an FM radio. In the UK, radio stations, the majority of radio stations are now on digital audio broadcast or DAB. 
So, um, however, FM, which frankly, um, as an option, should have died out quite a long time ago because digital came in, um, didn't. It was it was kept, and um, I think one of the reasons is is that a lot of people had trouble with DAB uh, in terms of. Um, well, so much getting used to it. Oh, I'm not sure the equipment for a long time was really up to speed, and um, so I'm just taking this away so I can get me uh, eyes close to the board so I can see what goes where. Um, yeah, so um, I'm not entirely sure why FM is still out there, but I'm rather glad it is because I um, I think it's a bit more reliable than DAB, frankly. Uh, digital's all right, but um, sometimes a bit of old-fashioned analog is uh, no bad thing. Right, so I think that's most of the 10Ks in. So you can see how I've got to get all these uh, resistors um, valued, and then once I've worked out what the values are, I will whack them on the board. So let me do that and get all the resistors out of the way. Right, okay, so that's all the resistors in there. So if I'll just bring that up here um, and try and focus on it. That's all the resistors uh, and where they live. Um, that was slightly out of place, otherwise I won't be able to get that transistor in there. But save you looking at the values if you just want to follow those colour codes, bring it nice and close up to the screen. Uh, so there you go. I've also put in um, the uh, a couple of uh, ceramic caps there and there, marked 104, and you can see they're marked 104 on the uh, cap itself. Good old fashioned 1N4 and 48 diode, um, and uh, you can see the black mark uh, goes on the right. Um, uh, so that is, in other words, that's polarity critical. Um, so what to do next? I think the next thing to do, because I'm going to do all the diodes, uh, the LEDs. Well, they are diodes at the end of the day, but I'm going to do all the LEDs uh, last. Um, so I'm going to put in all of this guff here. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think it's going to be the chips next. Um, and then... Or should I do the transistors? I don't know. I think I'm going to do the chips because the transistors stand proud and I don't want to get away of uh, installing the chips. So let's have a quick look at what we've got here. I do hope these are not static sensitive. But So that one's a, what's an HYC 72337, no, 33Z. Uh, let's see if I can find it on the board here it's probably not going to be uh, so it's the CD number we're looking for CD 4069BE 4069 so it's that one there so that's really got to do match the chip up to the number on the silk screen and uh, pop it in so let's just do this one we know where that one lives now that lives in there of course, they're never. Pens are nearly always bent on arrival because they only pack the package these kits up in plastic bags. No boxes or anything like that, so that's why sometimes these kits can arrive a little bit damaged sometimes. But generally speaking, they're all right. Um, well, that's wrong, isn't it? No, that's right. No, that is right. Um, noting, of course, it's find a. Let's find a better pointer. Oh, I'll just use this for now. Um, <clears throat> again, as always, the uh, position of the chip's important, so you can see this cutout here um, is emulated on the board, like it is here, for example, on there. So you just make sure that the chip is in that direction. So, okay, so we've got all the pins through the other side. Now I'm just going to lay this flat. And so I'm zoom in a little bit. 
for you. So the pens are there, and all I'm going to do is I am going to simply solder one of the pens. What should we go for? So I'll press down on the board a bit so I've got something showing through. Oh, that one there will do, it doesn't really matter which one. There we go. So that now holds the whole chip in. And all I do now is just press down on the chip. You can see it's not flat or anything, so I just press down on the chip, reheat that particular pin like that, and it all clips in neatly into place. And you can see those pins sticking out there, and they will stay there now whilst I solder the rest of them. So let's do that. Um, let's get the old magnifying glass to help my poor old eyes. And that is by far the easiest way of doing it, or well, certainly the easiest way of doing it for me. Just just um, just solder up one pin and uh, use that to hold it in place for the rest of the pins. Much easier. I've seen people use bits of sellotape or sticky tape just to hold onto the board. No point in doing that. Just temporarily solder one point in, reheat it while you press down on the chip, and it will click nicely down to the board all very neat and clean that one that one already done that was our first one again doing this through the camera and through the mitre through the the uh, the magnifying glass and the fact that my eyesight is crap at the best of times is probably meaning I'm not doing the best job I could with this. I think I'll even put enough solder on some of those. At any rate, let's um let's offer it up to the camera and have a closer look. And uh, I think I think they'll do is the answer. Yeah. That one's looking a bit squiffy. I'm not even sure it's got any solder on it. I think it has, but it hasn't got enough. I'm going to do that one again. Yeah, in fact, there's a couple there that I haven't done very well. Again, it's, it's doing it through, trying to do it through the um, the camera and the magnifying glass and all the rest of it. Well, that's my excuse, anyway. Right. And I'm sticking to it. There we go, that's better. And that one as well. There we go. Right, so that's the uh, that's the first chip in, like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in all the other chips now. And uh, when I've done that, then I think we'll probably do the electrolytic caps and the transistors. In fact, I might do those... Um, at the same time, transistors, again, similar principle. I don't know if this is the right hole for this particular transistor, but in uh, in principle, the best thing to do is not what I'm doing here, clearly. Uh, right. Oh, get in your swine. Right, there you go. Um, I just push them down like that splay out the two outer legs and oh that's my uh multimeter switching off all right there we go uh then i i i'd simply solder that middle pin whilst giving it uh pressing down on it with my finger there that means it's nice firm position then solder the other two and um bob's your uncle there we go. I'm going to take that out. That might have even been the right place for that one. I don't know. Um, so there we go. Yes, yeah, so I'll do the rest of the chips. Um, I'll do the transistors. Um, and I'll do the electrolytic capacitors as well. And again, um, with the electrolytic capacitors, um, they are polarity sensitive. So you've got a plus and a minus. Um, the cap is marked with a minus. And it's always the shorter lead. So the shorter lead is is negative, 
and the longer lead is positive. So if this is the right place for that one, it will be longer lead positive in there and negative in there. And um, well, the rest is easy. So uh, that's probably in the right one for that, isn't it? Was that 10 microfarad? No, that's 220 microfarad. That would have been wrong. Okay, so I'm going to put all of those components in. Um, uh, it will take me a little while to solve all that lot up and um, then uh, come back. We have... Well, it looks like an LED in the middle there. Probably is. Why not? Fair enough. Um, we can pop that in. Uh, and uh, we're getting close to having this done, apart from the fact we've got all these LEDs to do, um, which will be a lot of soldering. Still, we're getting there. Good, good practicing for soldering. Um, one of the nice things about this board, of course, is that it's all it's all through hole. There's no there's no surface mount. So um, if you've not done soldering before, then um, this is a good practice board. Even if you screw it up, it doesn't really matter because these things are so damn cheap. Um, you know the uh, nice to get it working, of course, but um, it's a good good board for learning how to solder. You've got a board, you've got all the components, you learn polarity and all the rest of it. If you're not sure, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's good for that. Anyway, um, let me get those components in, and we'll be right back. Right. Well, I think that's all the components in now. Um, I'll get a bit more light on that. Um, yeah, I think everything's in now. Let's focus in. So, got all the chips in. All the transistors were the same value, so that was easy. And you can see the orientation of them, flat edge to flat edge. Just follow the uh, design on the silk screen. Uh, oh, got a diode to do there, but I an LED rather, but. Uh, I'll do that when I do these guys. I've even got the horrific speaker in. Um, these are on-off switches, so that's power. That's to pause. Uh, that's to start and to stop. Um, and also the power supply jack. Looks like there's a separate uh, supply there if you wanted to put a, a battery on it. Um, so for a 5 volt supply, we're not going to do that. We're just going to use the USB cable that came with it, which is this guy. So that's easy enough. Then, much fun with these guys. So for me, I think that's a job for another night. But for you, it will be immediate. Right, it's the next day. And um, I'm in the mood for a lot of soldering. Well, not really, but I'm going to have to be because there are many LEDs that need to be soldered. 61 altogether, so you've got one round to 60 there, and you've got one there. Uh, so that's a lot of LEDs. So I have a lot of LEDs because they came with a kit. Um, and you'll notice that with the LEDs, rather like the electrolytic capacitors, you've got one long uh, lead leg lead and one short the long one's positive the short one is negative and if you have a look at the battery uh, battery symbols the LED symbol you can see that uh, you have like a a triangle and then a line so if you imagine that line represents negative um, then that's the hole for the shorter lead. So in that one, it would go in the thusly. Um, so just push all that all the way down. And there we go like that, and that's held in. And what I will do with this is what I normally do is as... Um, I have done with the other components is uh, first of all get myself a bit of sealed air actually I'm going to need more than a bit there's quite a lot to solder here but start off with that get my cup of tea out of the way because that's absolutely critical it's, um, I think it's illegal to solder without a cup of tea uh, well it is in this household anyway oh I've gone out of focus 
Right. So I'm just going to solder one lead. Like that. Just briefly. And then I can then make sure that the LED is nice and flat and square to the PCB. If it is, then I'll solder the other lead. And uh, then do that another 60 times. And I don't think you need to see me do that. So that's what I'm going to do now is solder it all up. And then once I've done that, the kit should be complete and we can power it on. Um, oh, we live in exciting times. So let me do the uh, LEDs first. Right, well, they're all installed. Um, and I think I've installed them the right way around. I'll tell you something, if I haven't, I'm chucking this in the bin because I ain't unsoldering that lot. So, um, be it upside down. The next thing to do is the last thing, and that is to power it up and see if it works. So here we have the power supply cord. I have a USB power bank to the side here, which I shall just plug into. And um, we will plug it in. Okay, power. Well, had I just switched it off there? Oh, we have life. Okay, so let's press start. Okay, so it is counting down, I'm guessing, at one second intervals, which is all very interesting. <sighs> we can pause it. And that flashes while it's pausing. Okay, fair enough. We can unpause it. And off it goes again. I'm fascinated to see what happens when it gets to 60. Perhaps it won't do anything. So we've got start, stop, pause, and button and power. I'm not sure what the uh, speaker does. There's no instructions with this thing, so I haven't got a clue. So I guess all it's doing and it stops when it gets to 60. So, start, stop. Oh, right, so that sends it back to the beginning again. Start, stop. Hmm. Start, pause. And we get a flashing LED in the middle while it's pausing. Very good. And, um, well, there we go. Uh, we don't seem to have any sound, which actually is a good thing. Have I got that the right way around? Yeah, that's soldered incorrectly. So it seems to be doing what it should be doing, but I don't know. Is that worth the effort? Well, it's like I said before, in terms of learning how to solder, this is a cracking little kit. There's a lot of soldering to be done. There's a little bit of learning about the polarity of certain components. You've got a whole bunch of chips there, including an any 555 time of the chip, chip there. Um, you've got a speaker, which doesn't seem to do so at all. That's fair enough. You've got some transistors and resistors, all good learning stuff. So um, if you haven't uh, um, gotten into learning how to solder yet, then perhaps this is quite a good kit for that. Um, but uh, so there you go. Um, I probably need to find some instructions for this because I, I'm just let me start and press and hold. So if that makes any difference.
No. About stop and hold. No. Pause. No. So I'll start. Pause. Unpause. Hmm. I might have some something wrong here, presumably, which is stopping the the speaker from functioning. Um, but if it is, I don't know what it is. Ah, there you go. Anyway, so there we go. Silly kit. Very silly kit. I've got some nicer kits here, which I do want to put together at some point, and also some more silly kits. Um, so once I've uh, have an opportunity to get my head around what I've got here. Um, I'm hankering to do an FM radio again, um, which I do have one of, so I'll probably hook that out at some point. Uh, until then, I hope you enjoyed this little build, another silly kit from Banggood, and uh, fun was had by all. Until next time, cheers for now.